Hey guys, how's it going? We got a new deck profile today, so I'm uh, pretty excited about this one. I, as you guys have seen probably if you watch our videos, I've been really excited about Kyrick mostly, especially in the gameplay videos and such against the other starter decks. And so I made a deck for him, and so I'm gonna go over that both uh, pre and post when the set comes out. I mean, there's really not much of a difference. But uh, so we'll first go over the ruler. So obviously we have uh, the ruler, which is Kyrick. He has a judgment for three, energized for red. When you start the game, he gains 10 strength counters. And at any point you can tap him to bring you back up to 10 counters. So that means if you have two counters and you tap him, you go to 10. If you have eight counters and you tap him, you go to 10. You basically always go to 10 no matter what. So it's not a situation of if you have five and tap him, now you have 15. It's just you always tick back up to 10 no matter what. Now, one thing that was pointed out recently by the judges is that you can actually, because when you start the game, he has the effect of gaining 10 counters, and in response to that effect triggering, triggering, you can tap him to gain 10 counters, and then you gain that 10 on top of it, so you could start the game with 20 counters, which is really cool. The downside is you wouldn't be able to uh, tap for a stone turn one, because during your first turn, regardless if you're going first or second, you're not able to recover during the recovery phase during that first turn. So unless you have pig and you energize to put him out and then banish him to recover your ruler and then tap for a stone, you're gonna be short a stone and then you'll be short a resonator even if you get that stone. So it's sort of a trade off depending on the deck you're going against. Maybe you really want those 20 counters because it's really important. Maybe if you're going against Fox to instantly kill those chimeras early game to help gain you a little bit of an edge maybe, but I'm not entirely sure, but something to keep in mind. When EJ activates, uh, when he enters the field, he takes up to 15 counters, rather. He doesn't gain 15 counters. One thing important to note is, say you have 15 counters on him, he has an ability that you can remove five strength counters from his J Ruler side to deal 500 damage to target J Resonator. So when you J activate, say you have 15 counters already on his Ruler side and you flip over, you can burn those 15 immediately in response to him entering the field, and then you'll gain them back because of how the stacking works. So. It's a cool little effect. Uh, you can see it do it, us do it in our most recent gameplay of it and probably in the gameplay that's gonna be coming out uh, pretty soon of him versus some other decks. But yeah, it's just a really cool combo and he's just able to keep burning and he has a thousand uh, defense and 1200 attack and he has precision as well, which is pretty cool. But yeah, so that's the J Ruler. I'll get into the stone deck here first. For the stone deck and you guys can sort of change this up to suit how you might be playing and how consistent you want it. But as of right now, I run a uh, four magic uh, stone of her score for red blue. This entire deck is red blue. So it's just good to have that card. I run two burning water magic stone. Uh, I'm sort of debating whether I run, should run four of them. Of course you lose sort of the consistency because of the counters, but you get to uh, get out of pain life for a magic stone of vaporization, which I run two of as well. So it's, you might want to run two of the burning water, or I mean, you might want to run four of the burning water or four of the vaporization. I chose to do half and half, just sort of kind of balanced out because I'm not sure what's worse, pain life or having be limited to only tapping for blue twice. But there's not that much blue per se, so it might work out. And then I run two of the dragon ore, which is the stone that goes with Kyrake, where when it comes into the field, you put two strength counters on him and it just taps for red. So that's the stone deck. As far as the cards that aren't in it that are coming in, uh, I run, a, or I want to put in, one uh, Kame Demon of Vice. So this is a pretty cool card because it's a four cost, a thousand thousand demon. As the effect of when it enters the field, you get to recover to resonate, a resonate your opponent controls with total cost two or less. Pull it over to your side of the field and it gains swiftness to end of turn. So now you get a two or less cost uh, resonator and uh, with swiftness to do some damage, however, it combos with his second effect, which is whenever a resonator you control attacks, th this card, him, uh, deals 200 damage to your opponent. So now suddenly you're doing 200 damage to your opponent on top of swinging with a resonator and possibly killing it. Especially if you have, if you have an extra will floating around, because if you pay one will, you get to banish a resonator and this he gains a swiftness until end of turn. So what you do is you grab the resonator, swing with it, you do 200 damage to your opponent, maybe damage to them or killing a resonator with that two cost and then you banish it to give him swiftness and then swing for a thousand. So it's a cool little effect and uh, just good to have. Uh, I only am planning to put one in, but I might put more depending on how consistent he ends up being. 
And then obviously I run four food supply. So this actually turns out very important to the deck. I'd ran the deck without the food supply. And it did pretty decent, all things considered. I mean, I went against uh, Fox, uh, among other things. And it was able to hold its own. It ended up not edging out. And one of the main things that was sort of a detriment to the deck was Jay activating and getting those 15 counters and burning and doing all that stuff was really cool and really good, except there's no way to repopulate those uh, counters consistently and well. And with food supply, you're able to do that because it's a one cost quick cast and uh, you get to put five strength counters on your J ruler and you get to draw a card. So it's the first ever chant fire spell that's able to draw a card, which is kind of cool, but also gives you those five counters, which is good to have. Uh, so having four of those, that's 20 counters just on its own. And, and yeah, I'd, I find that those will be very important and especially I would, I would save them if they're in your deck till you J activate just because you're able to consistently get counters back onto your J ruler with this deck. So you don't need to worry about that when it's on its ruler side, but when it J activates is when it becomes tricky. Um, and then this uh, is, is obviously it's already out, but it's not in the deck right now. So this is up to your discretion, but for severing wins, uh, you can put them in there. Uh, you just got to figure out what you want to leave and stuff like that. So that's sort of what I have going on that's not in it right now. So getting into the deck. So now everything from this point forward is legal. So if at, at this point in time, at least, uh, obviously the, some of the cards I said are coming out in rotation. But so this deck list I have right here, you can make right now. Which So while you're waiting for Ancient Knights to come out, if you're really excited to play Kier like I was, this is what I made. It was pretty fun. Like I said, it did decent. Uh, could probably do a couple changes, which I'll go over depending on your play style. Um, the cards that could probably be replaced, like when uh, when I took those cards out, the proxies for the next set, one thing I put in was uh, Red Riding Hood from ENW and uh, Rainbow Arrow. And so that's something you could replace, although I did like the sort of feel clear and more uh, burning to the resonators and different things like that. That combos with some other cards in the deck. But some, one thing I noticed is I did have an excessive amount of themes that recover my ruler, and especially like the whole L pig is completely useless once I J activate. So I might scale back on some of those. However, if you are a lot more aggressive than me and are able to consistently burn through those counters or are constantly tapping your ruler and need to untap it and stuff like that, then you might want to keep the deck as is. It just depends on your play style. But we'll start with the resonator. So I run three of Apprentice Cook. So he's just a 300, 400 resonator. And when he enters the field, you put two uh, strength counters on your J ruler. So it's just a nice uh, consistent card to keep up those counters but on either side of your ruler. I run three uh, sprinting flame horse. So I run this just to give things swiftness. So things like the uh, dragon, which I'll be coming to, or Kyrick himself is the main thing. So I can J activate, burn the stuff, clear a lot of their field, gain the 15 counters, give them swiftness, swing, and if they block, I can burn again and different things like that. And plus he has the plus two buff from it. So that's the main reason I run it is for Kyrick, but it can work with other stuff in this deck as well. I run three of uh, Flute's Water Dragon. So this is the one cost 100, 400 dragon that can tap for a stone rather than your J ruler. So for obvious reasons, I run that not only to uh, tap instead of a ruler so I can tap to bring up to 10 counters, but it's also nice when you J activate being able to still call for stones even when you're J activating and burning stuff and swinging in and different things like that. And it has the seal of five. So when it gets to five, it gains plus four, plus four and flying, which makes it a pretty decent one drop after turn five. I run four of Hoel Pig. So I, I actually probably will scale this back down to three, but so he's a one cost, uh, uh, 400, 300 pig, and you can banish him to recover your ruler. It's only your ru ruler, not your J ruler, keep in mind. So once you J activate, like I said, you're sort of on your own. I run two of the uh, dragon of Mount Howell. So this is a four cost, uh, 1500, 1500 dragon with flying. And it, every time it attacks and every time it blocks, you have to remove two strength counters. If you can't remove counters, then it cannot attack or block. So this is another thing that problem I ran into when I J activated and I ran through my counters. Suddenly he can't attack or block because I don't have counters. And I had no way really to populate them unless I came across that one cost resonator and then I could block or attack once. So, um, He's really strong though for, I feel for four cost. And if you have an extra will up, giving him swiftness, having a 1500, 1500 flyer with swiftness for uh, uh, only five cost isn't too shabby, I think. Uh, I run three of the Riding Hood, uh, Rainbow to the Heavens. Yeah. She's a, a one cost four, four uh, resonator. 
and CO3 and when she breaks that she just gains flying and swiftness. So she's just a, a decent one drop and having flying and swiftness once you get that seal broken actually makes her a pretty good one drop. However the main reason I won't run her is to combo with a rainbow arrow. So this is a one cost quick cast chant that deals 400 damage to target resonator. And if you pay its awakening, which is just resting a red riding hood you control, it deals 400 damage to every other resonator uh, on top of the 400 you're doing to the target resonator. So 400 to the whole field, essentially. Um, so that's just, if you're able to do that off, it's really good for field cleared and stuff like that, especially with that new elf uh, J ruler coming out and obviously other decks as well. But just having the 400 damage is also good as a backup in case you don't have the red riding hood. Obviously, I run three lightning strike. As you can see, straightforward, just deal 500 damage to stuff or your opponent. Uh, it comes really handy, uh, especially if there was like a game I could have won, a game or two I could have won if I could just pull my lightning strike. So I'll probably take out one of the pigs and put in another lightning strike. But once again, up to your discretion. I run four of Burning Awakening, so this is a two cost quick cast, and as an additional cost to it, you have to remove five counters from your J ruler, and it buffs target J uh, resonator you control, I believe you control, something. It buffs stuff, uh, plus a thousand, plus a thousand till end of turn. So I found this really helpful, just doing a crap ton of damage, you swing in with a three cost, and they're like, okay, they, what would happen is they just wouldn't block it because it's a low cost, and then you'd buff it and you swing in for a lot. And it, it, it accentuated one of the problems that I mentioned before when I was J-activated, where I could have sworn in for game if I just had five counters to play that card, and I just needed that one cost quick cast food supply. So it's just something to keep in mind, guys. Be very wary of when you J-activate, as of right now, until we get the new set, because of that counter problem. Unless you're planning to let him die. If he dies and flips back, you'll be golden, but you'll lose the burn effect. But yeah, so I find Burning Awakening really helpful and, and a lot of fun actually. Uh, next I run four of Hell Flame. So this is the one cost quick cast where you remove an X amount of counters from your J ruler, strength counters, and it deals that much damage. So you remove six counters to do 600 damage and so forth. So it's just a good in general burn to have. You're constantly uh, able to repopulate your strength counters pretty easily. So you can burn for six, burn for 10, and then just bring those 10 counters back up for one cost. That's not too shabby at all, especially since it, uh, um, it, uh, especially since it applies to J resonators. So you're able to kill J rulers pretty easily, which is going to be really important going forward. So now people don't worry about black moonbeams. So they might be J activating more, being more focused on things like that. So being able to have that burn is going to be really cool. Uh, I run uh, three of uh, Flute's Awakening, so it's a one cost that recovers target J Resonator you control, and it cannot attack this turn. I run it for several reasons. One of the main reasons is just to recover my J Ruler or another strong Resonator in order just to have a blocker going into their turn, especially if I'm low health, it's good to have. It, it's just good for in general usage, I've found. Um, but yeah, it's just a good card to have, I, I, in my opinion. It's one I might scale back a bit though. Next I run two, uh, Truth and Time, Truth of Time. So this is the one cost where you draw a card and it has a seal of six. Once that seal breaks, you can draw two cards now instead of just one card. So just being able to pull some cards is good to cycle through your deck. It's just good to have them there. And lastly, I run three of Charlotte's Water Transformation Magic where you turn target resonator into a four, four bear. So what I mentioned before with Rainbow Arrow, since it does do less than lightning strike, but being able to still do 400 damage is good because you just turn them into a bear and you're able to kill them because they only have 400 health. So it's just all around good to have. But yeah, so that's what I'm working with. I had a lot of fun with it, playing at my locals with that version of the deck, with the exception of when I jack finding out when I J activated, I could really use food supply. But outside of that, I did I found myself doing pretty good when like going against Fox and being able to burn the Chimeras when they came in pretty easily, turning them into a bear and then just burning them. Different things like that. Um, it just gets bogged down really late game against Fox when Fox is, is just able to keep cycling off the combo pretty consistently. You really need to burn in pretty quick early on in order to prevent that. Or maybe hold off on J activating until you know you can swing in for the kill or something like that. We'll have some gameplay of it so you guys can sort of see. I, I'll we'll mention the video. I, I guess I'm still deciding whether I'll use this version of the deck or the one with food supply. I'll probably throw the food supply in because that's the version of the deck that's going to be the deck prime. 
So uh, look forward for that video, unless it already came out. I don't know, we'll see. And let me know you guys' thoughts, uh, uh, what you think of Keurig and uh, subscribe for more and we'll join our Discord if you wanna talk about more topics like that, this and stay up to date with different things we'll be doing. And uh, yeah, we'll see you guys next time.